There is abstract, undefined art. But did you know that there is also inconcrete film music, representing something that is not clearly understandable? In film music, the meanings and what the central themes represent are generally understood by the audience. And thus, the dramaturgy and musical narrative is more easily comprehensible. Explanatory videos are available for almost all of the mentioned films. The links are in the description of this video. The audience knows and interacts with the themes of Maximum. Of communication and close encounters of the third kind. Of Michael Corleone. Of Satan. or of the fabulous amusement park. There are also central themes whose real meaning is not revealed until late in the film, such as the theme of harmonica, which is not his, but Frank's, to whom he returns it after fulfilling his revenge. The theme of Ben-Hur, which is not of his emotions, but of his destiny, reached in the chariot race. or Andrews, which we later find out is actually Fletcher's. And also, there are themes that pretend to represent something, but are, due to a not entirely correct use, somewhat confusing, such as Brokeback Mountain, The Orphanage, or even Patton. We remind you that you have the links to these videos to see the complete explanation of these quotes. There are themes that are open to two interpretations, both defensible, such as the final theme of Blade Runner. This propulsive theme marks a future of persecution and exile, but is it music for optimism or is it pessimistic? And then, there are the abstract themes, which have no clear meaning, nor are they intended to, leaving it up to the audience to give them a meaning. What do mean the main themes of Forrest Gump? Amarcord. The Third Man. They all represent something, clearly, but they can lead to different interpretations. Probably all them valid ones. After all, the art of film music is also like that. And one of the most splendid examples is Richard Robbins' score for James Ivory's film, The Remains of the Day. In The Remains of the Day, Stevens is a methodical butler who serves at Darlington Hall in the 30s, where its owner, a British aristocrat, convenes a high-level meeting pretending to facilitate a peace treaty between the Germans' Nazi government and Great Britain, for which he will be accused of being a traitor. At Darlington Hall, enters to serve as housekeeper Miss Kenton, with whom Stevens falls in love in silence, being reciprocated, although Stevens does not get to take the first step, as he puts his responsibility as a butler ahead and misses the only opportunity of his life to love and be loved. More than 20 years later, Darlington Hall has been bought by an American millionaire, whom Stevens also serves, and Stevens decides to go to meet Kenton. In a very small way, I did make my own mistake, but I might still have a chance to set mine right. In fact, I'm on my way to try and do so now. The film is not explained chronologically, but jumps from the present, the 50s, to the past, the 30s, and from the past to the present. The music by Richard Robbins is based on an extended musical theme, at the core of which are repetitive, constant, circular, and static notes. inserted in a melody that does progress. 
This theme appears for approximately 30 minutes of the film. In both time periods, 1950s, 1930s, you, sir? Look, I'm short-handed in the diamonds, nice. I can use you in the service. And especially with Stevens, mainly in Stevens, both inside the mansion and outside it. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stevens. I'm hoping there's a letter for me. What does this theme mean? What does this music represent? Oh, Mr. Stevens, I so often think of the good old days when I was the housekeeper. It is quite reasonable to suppose that those repetitive, constant, circular, and static notes refer to the rigidity, routine, perfectionist diligence, and imperturbability of Stevens, who lives by and for his service and not by and for his feelings. Between Sally Kenton and Stevens, music stands between them like an insurmountable barrier that she cannot cross and he does not want her to cross. All you have to do is pop your head outside this door and see for yourself. It won't take a moment. I will look into the matter in due course, Miss Kenton. You think it might be a fantasy? A fantasy on my part, due to my inexperience? I'm busy in this room, Miss Kenton. I shall wait. No, I thank you for your advice, Miss Kenton. Now perhaps you will allow me to go about my business. Oh, I never meant to keep you from your business, Mr. Stevens. Thank you. He watches her. And even seems to relax the resistance when the music relaxes his stiffness. You mean a great deal to this house. You're extremely important to this house, Miss Kenton. But the music is a barrier. Even though he secretly loves her. Life progresses and evolves, as expressed in the melody that does progress and has a sad air. But he neither progresses nor evolves. He is stuck in the same repetitive, constant, circular and static notes. Twenty years later, he wants to fix his mistake and travels to visit Kenton. His music is no longer a barrier, but the acceptance of what has been lost. <laughs> you must take good care of yourself, Mrs. Ben. You too, Mr. Stevens. Promise me that. Oh, yes, In I their farewell forever, for the first time, there is no music between them. But the repetitive notes are what he is. He returns to them and with absolute happiness. His life is that of service. He has no other life. This is a coherent and reasonable explanation of the meaning and representation that music brings to the character, to whom it gives much greater depth. However, it happens that the music is not only with him. It is also applied in different contexts and characters. At Darlington Hall... Sir Jeffrey. Oh. Good to see you. How do you do? With the aristocrats... with Jack Lewis, the American millionaire who buys the mansion, or with the rest of the service.
This forces us to reconsider what music represents, which cannot be the individuality of a character, although it obviously means him too. It seems more appropriate to consider that music symbolizes a place, Darlington Hall, and rigid and strict social codes, to which Stevens not only submits, but willingly accepts, and that world, from which Kenton has left, Stevens takes with him when he goes to visit her. It is the music that is listened when he is asked about that world. Was there a Lord Darlington, some sort of not? And when he talks about that world. I was there to serve him, not to agree or disagree. You trusted him? Yes, I did completely. But at the end of his life, his lordship himself admitted that he'd been mistaken. He cannot leave it and returns to it willingly. So Mrs. Ruth Musgrad. Excellent references. She was the music does not have a precise and concrete, clearly understandable meaning, but precisely because of this, it launches the film into a much higher and superior dimension.